Thank you. Have your seat, please. <laughs> now I'm trying to just meet Nola to Mr. Wanaki. Oh, oh, by the way, before I forget, I can get a little absent minded for you. Jeremy Wanaki was honored, honored by the uh, Bronx Chamber of Commerce Veterans Association. He received an award there yesterday. <laughs> I had to get that out. I think I would, you know, forget, you know, my senior moments and come a lot lately. Okay. I, and now I will try to speak over to Jeremy. Everybody, come on. Thank you, Tony. Um, okay, let's move on to the gallery session. The gallery session is closed. So. All right, so uh, you have three minutes, guy session speakers. Uh, please come up here to get to the, the mic. In fact, I'm going to remove that mic stand that doesn't work for the, doesn't hold the mic. So please come up to me. And uh, we will start with Denise Pagan uh, regarding uh, Hostess Community College, allied health coverage, uh, free training, and certifi certification. And I'm going to pick up this uh, 30 second sign when you have the 30 second mark and then at three minutes that's it good evening everyone my name is denise pagan i am from hostess community college and we are we have a new program called the ally health career pipeline program we are part of the division of continuing education our program offers a free training and certification we also help the participants um, and the candidates for this training to get a job. Our program is funded by the um, Affordable Care Act and is part of a national study. And I am here to inform everyone to please share with the community, family, and friends that we have for grant to help those interested in developing a career in the evolving field of health care. And the different trainings that we are offering Right now is Certified Nursing Assistant, which is CNA, Clinical Medical Assistant, CMA, Community Health Workers, they refer to it as CHW, Contextualized High School Equivalency, and the Health Information Technician, Home Health Aid, Patient Care Technician. We're having a class that's starting November 28th for the Home Health Aid. For Home Health Aid, the the, uh, the students do not need to have a high school diploma. And this is for anybody 18 and over. Wow. The people that qualify for this training, they have to go through an inquiry, um, inquiry requirement. They could call the number of the flyers right on the table, has a number there. Any questions, feel free to call the number. They will go over all the details on the program and this is a great, great time to people looking to better themselves, those especially that are in the public system or low income or in any way disadvantaged financially, to take advantage of this course and enter the field that is evolving and has a promising future for a lot of the people that are interested in the health and medical uh, career. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. Uh, no, no. Questions from the board members? Oh, well, I'm sorry. No? All right. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Marcy Gross, regarding Monty Nurses and the MTA. Um, it, it'd be better, I mean, I know some board members prefer that you're up there. If we could just stay with that tradition, that would be great. Where am I getting the mic? Yeah, from here, I'm sorry. My stand does not hold the mic. Speak about that. Board members. Hello, everybody. How are you? Hello? Yes, it's on. So on the way home today, I got the news. I'm very unhappy about it. Um, MTA is uh, going to, um, they're planning on definite uh, fair hikes for 2017. So um, within the next few weeks, you're going to um, have public hearings. If anybody's interested in the public hearings, I did not go to the website yet for MTA. Please go to the website, document your dissatisfaction if you use the trains or buses. Okay. Do it. Unify. Do what you have to do. Keep the prices down. Hike. They still smell. They're overcrowded. So whatever you need, <laughs> do what you have to do. Mm -hmm. Stick together. They're late. The next issue. And the tandem bus is like one in the box. This, this um, we had a meeting, Health and Social Services, this week. Um, and we're, uh, we had a couple of interesting issues. We'll deal with the, the minutes later. But um, we are planning to have a meeting in December with Al's help. You can get us together, please, with um, one of the representatives from ICU, um, uh, Monty. Monty is having its usual issues with overcrowding and beds in the hallway. And it's time for us to really start supporting what we have to do to so stand on that. So, um, Al, uh, I spoke to this Misha Gauss this week. I spoke to him yesterday. Uh, hopefully, we can also get an 1199 representative to the table. Also, the nursing home. You got 1199 right over there. I want that. Yeah. Yes. And so, we really need to have this. I know staff here doesn't want to meet with us, but since he already came to Riverdale to keep at home, now he's in my territory. So, if he wants to shake hands over there, he's got to really come to terms with us. Um, if you can get Jeff Klein, I'd appreciate it also. That meeting will be held in December, uh, and I'll be there. Thank you. And if they don't want the press, then they have to really um, work with us. All right, thank you. Okay, leave the microphone here. Our first meeting is going to be with the representative of the elected officials so that we can set up a time for the elected officials to come together and then meet with uh, hopefully the hospital. They don't have to get the hospital to come to the table. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Al. Thank you, everybody. All right. any, any other questions, statements? Thank you. Marcy. Um, Cece, is there a way to turn these lights on if need be? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 switch. Thank you. Uh, Norma Lord Lopez from Kruger and Mays Block Association, Brunswick Park Community Association. Should I really come, come up, here? up here with the uniform? <laughs> 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 and they said, let them be right. Where can I hide right now in the uniform? <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Norma Lopez, and um, I'm from Kruger Mays Black Association. And first of all, I want to say thank you to the community board. Uh, with Chris also, uh, Veronica. Um, and, you know, when we go and get the permission to have the block party, not only do they, you know, give you the permission, but they guide you. They guide you, and these are the rules and regulations and so forth. And I think that that's important when we have these block parties, that they're done properly. And we cannot do it properly if, you know, if that stops. So please continue to, to help us, you know, do safe, effective, and, you know, successful block parties because they're very important. In the front desk, we have um, a picture of a portrait that was done by artists, sponsored by Allstate Farm, right there on White Plains Road and Mace Avenue, so you can take it so you can see it. Um, here today, because of that, we want to spread that in the community. And um, I'm here, I'm supposed to be here with someone else, so I'm going to speak on his behalf. There's a um, bar lounge called Poppy Nice, and it's on Radcliffe and Allerton Avenue. Now, I don't know him for many years, but what I want to do is I want to tell you what I learned about him. 
He came to my block party as a business owner. We go to the businesses in the neighborhood and they help us out with either right. food or something. And um, he pledged to give hot dogs and burgers. Wow, On the day of the block party, I met him again. He came with his wife and his child and he was not able to bring the hot dogs and burgers, but he was so blown away by the block party and all the activities that was going on with the children and the gifts, the book bags and the gifts. Like they got, they actually, this year they got um, Nook tablets from Barnes & Noble as a gift. So every year we give them something that's educational and tangible for them to use with their education, but we also give out the book bags and so forth. And um, he was so blown away that on that day, he brought an ice cream truck. And he actually made me tear because he said, Norma, this is, I've never seen a black party like this. This is amazing. So he put the black party, he put the ice cream truck at the end of the block, and everybody ate free no, ice only cream. The kids. Right. Only the kids. So what I'm trying to say is that um, if, well, he, he was so blown away, he says, I want to do a black party. So I know he's going to come in front of this board and to the community board because I am guiding him to come there. And he wants to do the same for the children and the community. And that's what I'm talking about. Developing the community and let this spread through our community. And I want to thank everyone involved. I have some volunteers. Please raise your hand if you volunteer. All these people, hands-on volunteer. We have a great community and thank you. By the way, we are also citizens of the Police Academy. So, do you have any questions? Yeah, right. Thank you. And we will take hands on. We're come again next year. Thank you. Uh, Marjorie uh, Guerra Rodnicker, your association. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Hello, my name is Marjorie. I'm from Montefiore's Neonatal Intensive Care Unit in Einstein, and I'm here to raise awareness of our staffing issues on the unit. We have an increase in patient census, and our patients are sicker since they have closed the high-risk maternity unit at another Montefiore facility. The nurses are understaffed. Patients that should be staffed one nurse to one patient aren't. We're being forced to care for two or three really sick babies that are extremely pre premature, <laughs> fragile, who have lung and cardiac issues and have a lot of medications and have very immature immune systems, which makes them high risk of infections, including anti-resistant bacterial infections, of which we just had an outbreak. The nurses are also being pulled off the unit to go get sick babies from around the state, as far as Pennsylvania, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and New Jersey. While we get the sick baby, another nurse is responsible for her patients and the patients of the nurse who is sent on transport. As a nurse who wants to do best for the sick infants, it's both heartbreaking and frustrating. We have tried everything to address these issues, meeting with management over and over again, and the issues we are experiencing exist in most units throughout Monty. Many of you have waited hours in the emergency room yeah. only to be admitted to a hallway. Uh -huh. Nurses are rushed to discharge and can't educate, so patients often come back too soon. So our and your reality is that we need more nurses and other hospital staff. The other reality is the Monty is making millions of your millions off of your health care. In the first nine months of this year, they posted a 5.6 million profit out of a revenue of 2.74 billion. They can afford to hire more nurses and other hospital staff, but they won't. So we're holding a bake sale soon to raise money for Montefiore. We'll have a bake sale with tables outside Wyler, and we invite this community to please show up, buy a baked good, and support our shared interest in improving the safety and quality of care in our community. We'll confirm the date with you soon. Please pick up a flyer on your way out. Thank you. The flyers are on the table over there. Questions? Questions? I understand that you have a, a lot of overtime, that the nurses do a lot of overtime. Oh, yes, we do. do a lot. Uh, that sometimes can be unsafe for the children because it's okay. Yeah, we're tired, we're burnt out, and some of it is because of the overtime. <laughs> Never tired. 
Hi, how are we doing? Hello. Have we approached the state board on health in regards to this matter? Because we have a board upstate in Albany that uh, handles matters like this when you have difficulty and you have patient care that's being affected because of understaffing. And we haven't gotten to the level right now where they give you a certain amount of nurses for patients like you do in California. What well, we're working on that and what you need to do is you need to bring that to Albany. Yeah, we have. We've done, we've been lobbying in Albany. <laughs> well, we've been, sorry, I'm with the New York State Nurses. We've been lobbying for a couple of years to get a safe staffing bill passed in Albany. Right. Uh, the New York Assembly has voted in favor of it. We hope that in the next cycle, the New York Senate will also support it, in which case we'll have a similar law to California. Yeah, yeah that's our goal. And Marjorie's been out there to lobby for, for that bill. Similar law to California. No, no, no. California's actually ahead of us. No, we don't want it. No, California, we don't want it. And our final guest speaker, our gallery session speaker, Alfred McDonald. Dowell. Dowell. New Path Horse Academy. Yes. Is there any new Horse Academy? Is, is this a business or is this not for profit? Not for profit. It's more of a business. Good evening, everybody. My name is Alfred McDowell. And um, I'm here today. I was here about over the summer working on my 50C and 501C, and we officially 501C3, 501C3, and we officially got it. So this we are new season. I mean, new path course academy, and we're excited about what we're doing now, guys. Okay, this is going to be an awesome program. I'm going to speak about it right now, a few minutes of your time. So New, New Path Horse Academy purpose is to prevent the treatment of cruelty towards unwanted, abused, and neglected horses around, in and around the state of New York. Uh, New Path Horse Academy will implement year-round activities, programs, and events which entitles members of the organization to build a relationship with a horse and develop skills in taking care of the horse. New Path Horse Academy, I'm sorry? Our New Path Horse Academy will seek out horses from adoption agencies nationwide. Individuals who can no longer take care of their horses will contact New Path Horse Academy by phone or through their website to learn about their services. The organization has high hopes to reach out to individuals suffering from autism, mental, mental disorders of all ages, and veterinary effects. Sorry, I'll pick that up. The organization also has plans to do multiple fundraisers throughout the year that are Western themed barbecues at the events. The organization's organization will have mini rodeos for small children, mechanical bull rides, for entertainment as well as hay rides, and petting opportunities for the general public, not only members. So we're here today just to